So you've probably already heard that Vladimir Putin has been brought up on charges for kidnapping in the International Criminal Court. Now, this is just an indictment. It's an arrest warrant. He hasn't been arrested. The charges are stemming from Russia forcibly relocating, also known as kidnapping, uh, between 6,000 and 16,000 Ukrainian children from Ukraine to Russia. This is a war crime. It's part of the genocidal acts section of the war crimes portion of the Geneva Convention, as well as the International Criminal Court. Now, the other person that was indicted was Maria Lavova Belova for the same charges. Now, Maria is currently the presidential commissioner for children's rights in Russia, which has got to be the most ironic thing of this decade. But it's a pretty an open and shut case for both of them, as they're on video admitting to doing this, admitting to exactly what the criminal court has charged them with. Here's the video of them admitting to it. So yeah, pretty simple. They admitted to it. However, the reality of bringing them to justice is a lot more complicated as the International Criminal Court doesn't have a policing arm. It relies on 123 countries that are signatories of the court documents of the treaty to arrest Vladimir Putin and this other woman. That's likely not going to happen. Interestingly, the United States is not a signer of the International Criminal Court, largely because the International Criminal Court Treaty would be deemed unconstitutional in the U.S. for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, the ICC doesn't conduct jury trials, which is a constitutional right in the United States. And second of all, it would mean that U.S. citizens could be charged for crimes they commit on U.S. soil, which is entirely within the judicial power of the United States. And then also it runs into an issue of who has jurisdiction when it comes to appeals. Does the U.S. Supreme Court as the supreme law of the U.S. land or does the International Criminal Court? Well, according to the U.S. Constitution, which is our supreme document that the U.S. goes by, the U.S. Supreme Court does. So if we were to say the U.S. Supreme Court could override the International Criminal Court, it would be a violation of the treaty. Therefore, the U.S. hasn't signed it. Now, despite not signing it, the United States has cooperation agreements with the International Criminal Court, and it works. The U.S. law enforcement, U.S. military has worked with them for investigation and even provides aid uh, and conducts business with them. They just are not a signer of the treaty because the treaty violates the U.S. Constitution. And this has been a policy that is carried through presidents of both parties to defer to the Constitution on this. So don't think this is just Republicans or just Democrats. Uh, all the way going back to Clinton and, and earlier, the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. judicial system has been seen as the supreme law of the land in the U.S. The ICC, therefore, doesn't have jurisdiction because if we were to grant jurisdiction, it would be a violation of our Constitution. Or if we granted jurisdiction and they ignored the ICC, we'd be violating a treaty. So we're just not signers. Anyways, that went off on a tangent. What is also interesting about the International Criminal Court signatories is there are two BRICS nations that are signers of this. So therefore, they are obligated to arrest Vladimir Putin if he goes to either country. And this is South Africa and Brazil. So immediately following this announcement, the editor-in-chief of Russian television, Margarita Simonian, had this brilliant tweet where she said, I would like to see a country that by decision of The Hague will arrest Putin about eight minutes or however long the flight time is to the, its capital. She's referring to obviously nuking the capital. So either she's so stupid that she thinks it's a good idea to nuke the city that your leader currently is in, or she's brilliant in her effort to eliminate Vladimir Putin. I'm going to go with like most Russians, she's very stupid. So what does this mean? Well, it doesn't mean Vladimir Putin is going to be arrested, but largely he cannot travel to any of those countries. It also means that no matter what the reason is, Vladimir Putin cannot have any business under diplomatic immunity, immunity in those 123 countries. The International Criminal Court overrides diplomatic immunity for those that have signed it. More than likely, he's not going anywhere. He's very paranoid. He'll stay in Russia be and be protected by his foolish oligarchy and his blind populace. Now, more importantly for the U.S., this is a reflection on the far-right Republicans that have come on record and say they don't support Ukraine or are saying the U.S. needs to stop supporting Ukraine or even some saying they support Vladimir Putin. And they all now have to contend with the fact that they support a charged war criminal in the International Criminal Court. And that's going to be displayed in every campaign ad, rightfully so, from here to the election.
At this point, you're essentially supporting someone who's in the same vein as Hitler and his Nazis at the Nuremberg trials, the genocidal Slobodan Milosevic, Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, Ida Amin, or Idi Amin, I'm sorry, and then Pol Pot. Not really a good crowd to be associated with. So now the likes of Matt Gaetz and Marjorie Taylor Greene have to really think about what they are saying when they say things like, quote, I've never seen Putin actually show in any detail his plans to invade Europe. No one has shown me that. So I don't believe the lies that I'm being told about this. Yes, Marjorie Taylor Greene actually said that on record. And yes, Ukraine is in Europe. And yes, Russia did invade it. So going forward, unfortunately, it's likely unlikely we're going to see Vladimir Putin behind bars unless someone from Russia provides him to the Hague and to the International Criminal Court. Otherwise, he's going to stay in his cozy little country with its nuclear weapons safe from uh, any kind of uh, arrest. However, that's where he has to stay. He can go to China, he can go to India and countries of that like that, but he's largely banned from Europe. He's going to be ban already banned from the United States and uh, Canada, etc. All of these other countries on in the entirety of the so of South America signed the ICC treaty. So not it's unlikely we're going to see him behind bars unless there's an overthrow and his own people hand him over for uh, for the trials, which is not unheard of. But um, just be aware. This isn't an open and shut, he's going to prison type of thing. There's a lot more at play here, and he's still secure within his own country at this point.